Good, Good morning. morning. And welcome to the show from a different place in the house every day. Can you show them the very special guest that we have sitting right behind you? He has to come here because we cannot touch the camera setup because it's janky AF and things will maybe fall over and it's not a good idea. But can you see him? Okay. I think they can see him. Him ears. Yep. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come You want to be on show today? You want to share with mama? You want to share with mama? Do you have a special oh. message to tell them? I want to share. I'll see it with mama here. What is your message for today? What is your message? Do you have a message today? I don't know. I'm wondering why uh, it's so wet outside right now. Mm. Boogie, you make it rain, that's why. Boogie's making it rain. You, you guys, it's it pouring. Rain. It's pouring here. It's wild. Yeah, it's incredible. In California, every day looks the same. Here, there's change. Mm. And it's green because... Because it, it rains a lot. It hurricanes. When it rains, it pours. Yeah, I just stopped. Um, all right, you guys, it is Tuesday. Tuesday is Q&A day, but before we get this party started, let's just go over a few housekeeping things. Um, Michelle asked if I caught the lizard. No, but today I almost smacked a pigeon because on the, on the, I Jarvin? learned it's called a broad walk as well. What is a board, broad walk? The, the Hollywood Beach boardwalk is called a broad walk. I didn't know that. I learned that yesterday. And the birds there, you notice they're just like totally yeah. careless yeah. or carefree, however you want to say it. They just don't give a shit. They're not scared of humans. They don't run away. There's walk. Like one literally flew and I about smacked it because I was trying to run and it was, I was like, ooh. I know. I totally have to maneuver <laughs> around them too. They do not give a shit. It's amazing. <sighs> Be like the pigeons in Hollywood Beach. All right, so a few housekeeping things. First thing. Yes. Okay. Careful with your foot. Remember this situation is. We've got tea. We've got some news. We, we've got T minus how many days still ENS live? Well, 23 minus 18. 23, five. Oh, whoops. Uh, um, plus, mine, 20, 30, There's like 20 No, I think like 26 days, days till, yeah. till ENS Live. And you guys, we are officially booked out. Um, for those of you guys who are coming, we're so excited to get to meet you in person. And if you didn't get a chance to 24 days no to, to register for the one this time, then there's always a next time. Um, so we'll hope to see you on the next one, but it's never going to be the first one. So if you're all aboard for the first ENS live, then all I just congratulations. Um, it's going to be very, very exciting. Okay. Also tomorrow and Thursday, um, Due to some obligations that we have, the show will be canceled as we will be traveling to Arizona. This time, not in a car, uh, <laughs> by a plane and our flight to Arizona and from Arizona is gonna be during the time of our show. So no espresso this Wednesday or Thursday, but if you know um, Stacy by now, she will have surprises for you, okay? <gasps> Other, th other than that, you guys, you know, our next live episode is going to be on Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 6 a.m. Pacific Time. It will be a live guest interview. So the link for that will be dropped on Thursday afternoon so that you'll be able to go ahead and check it out. But today is Tuesday, Q&A day. So and we have to make today maybe a, a little bit shorter of an episode because the moving truck is coming earlier than expected and we'll be here in a moment's time yeah so 
Uh, right now, I'm sh I'm shitting. I'm shitting on a random random ottoman. Yeah. Wow, that was a yeah terrible sentence. Yes. Um, so let's start with Beth Lewis from, from Waxhaw, North, North Carolina. Waxhaw, North Carolina. I'm starting to buy my gear for UTC, and I'm looking at rigs, bars, and plates. Uh, this is so exciting. Is there that much of a difference between purchasing a rogue gear and cap barbell gear? The cap branded stuff is more affordable, but if it's garbage, I don't want to invest in it. But if it's decent, I don't want to spend 30% more on the rogue name. Thanks, ladies. Golden question. That's a really good question. Golden question. Everybody wants the good shit. But not everybody's willing to pay for it. But Beth is. So this, yes. this is a great question. Do you know anything about CAP? I've Marvel never gear? heard about CAP. And, you know, the fact that we've done a lot of research and have actually um, experienced for ourselves a lot of... Um, Fitness equip equipment, 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 and haven't heard about cap yet. Makes me a little bit um, wary. Cap. The, the, okay, while you're looking that up, the very first thought that I have, this just my like initial instinctual response, is if it's thirty percent less, it probably is lower quality. And personally, I would probably go with Rogue. There's a couple of brands that provide things that Ro Rogue is like the one-stop shop for fitness equipment. Yep. And yes, you Highest will pay a little bit more, pay. but you will also get the best customer service and it will get to you quickly. So I mean, that's one of the other reasons I think that their stuff is more expensive. For one, you know it's going to be good quality. There's no question. They have a reputation of excellent quality equipment so it's not going to break down after a little while the squat rack that we have that you guys have seen from boogie gym 1.0 2.0 and it's about to be in 3.0 has literally traveled with us this will be our third location where we've taken it down and put it back up like their their stuff is so quality that you really cannot go wrong their service is top notch if you have an issue they will get back to you uh, this stuff will get to you um quickly i mean when I think everybody was ordering equipment for when there, everyone was locked down, that was a little bit different of a situation. But their, you know, their customer service is amazing. And oh. it's worth paying for. Also, I'm looking at their plates. So for one, you guys, something, something that's really important with regards to any barbell that you buy. So... The best barbells that you'll ever want to invest in are Rogue has top-notch anything fitness um, and Alico makes the best barbell. It is a Swedish brand. All of the like um, Olympic lifting pros use Alico because the spin of the bar, um, when it comes to like the technical lifts, the spin of the bar, no bar spins as fast as Alico. And that obviously helps to improve performance. However, and that, that's E-L-I-K-O, right? E-L-E-I-K-O, oh, yes. E-L-E-I-K-O. Um, but I'm looking at the CAP website. Let me just tell you a couple of things with regards to, I'm looking at their plates because I'm like, okay, like if I can save you a buck, let me see how I can do that. Just by looking at, you know, the, the way that they offer their plates, I can tell that, they can probably like, it depends, it depends on how you treat your equipment. Yeah. So here's the thing. I would say the, the cap equipment is geared more towards people who are very brand new to fitness just by looking at their plates, like their plates, like they don't have the rubber middle plates range. that are two and a half and five and seven and a half and 10 pounds. And they like, don't have the metal ring on the inside. So that tells me that the plastic's going to break at some point. Especially like if that barbell is going over your head at all and you're dropping it. Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing the underground training club, that might be a potential. And um, they just won't, they won't last. You'll yeah. end up buying more and you'll probably get rogue the next time anyways. Yeah, and then you'll just end up paying um, more. Rogue well. has high temp plates that are really good. Um, now there's certain things that you definitely want to get that are great quality. And then there's other things where it's like, you know, if you're not gonna use, like a sled, 
you know, like, do you need to get the most expensive, like best quality sled, pole sled or, or whatever, like a right? plyo box? Yeah. Like, is it gonna like, it might not like be the brand name or like the coolest, but it's not something that's likely to break or really have a lot of wear and tear then, you know, maybe go with the lesser, but like, if we're talking about barbells, if we're talking about dumbbells, if we're talking about kettlebells, if we're talking about, um, what else is like good to have that's quality? A jump rope, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, you know, some jump ropes you'll pay 30 bucks for, 50 bucks for. Plates, plates, let me tell you some about plates. Plates are super important. If you, if you are not getting a high quality plate, that shit is gonna wear and tear and it's actually gonna be ripped like apart away, like away from the metal. You know what I'm talking the, about, right? Yeah, the high temp ones. Yeah. Yeah, high temp, right? Yeah. So when it when it I would say when it comes to investing on the bigger stuff like the rig, like the barbell, like the plates, you know, um, make sure that you're getting the best stuff. Because here's the thing: when you invest in a quality product, by the end of the day, you end up paying less. Always, always, always. The best products are the most affordable because you usually don't need to replace them. Yeah, with Rogue, you're never gonna have to make that investment ever again. It's like it's like the inner circle. Right. It is the most affordable. It might not seem like it's it's not the cheapest. I'm not gonna say it's the cheapest, but it's the best deal. It's the best price. Why? Because you're gonna get the result that you want without having to return the thing and get or or without having to repurchase something else later because that didn't work or that broke or that was ineffective or whatever. So normally the best quality things have a higher price tag initially, but end up being the most affordable because you don't have to go and buy something else afterwards. So yeah, there's that. Um, Beth Lewis, if you have any more specific questions with regards to particular equipment for the UTC, please feel free to email us so we can, you know, really give you our honest feedback. We understand that. Look, if you guys are making an investment, we will, we will tell you guys what is the best thing. So, because by the end of the day, you end up saving more and there's nothing more frustrating than spending a bunch to having to spend another bunch and then toss out shit. That's what normally happens with mediocre fitness equipment. It lasts for a year or two, and then you have to like rebuy your entire gym. It's and then, like, you, and then sometimes you waste time cause you're without the equipment for however long until you yeah. get new stuff and you got to go back online and you got to reorder stuff. And yeah. Yeah. See, Charlotte said she has cap dumbbells. Won't recommend that. Mm -hmm. Recommend. Yeah. yeah, I think that that brand serves more of like the culture of like Globo Gym aerobics equipment, not so much like, you know, just high quality functional, functional fitness or performance fitness equipment. Great question. <clears throat> Melanie O'Connor from Delaware. How do you prevent and or deal with what I can only describe. Oh wait, we did that last week. As, uh-uh, as the success. As scary. Scary. We did that last week, I remember. We were driving to Arizona that morning. I remember this conversation. Okay. You were driving. Okay. Did we read this mm -hmm. one? No. This is a good one. Okay, this one might be the last Melanie, one. Melanie, I wonder, I wonder if one. you asked that question two times. So Melanie asked that question on the chat because we oh, hadn't gotten to it. Oh, that's right. Okay. Because we were doing a whatever I was Wednesday. like totally living in, in deja vu land. I think we were doing, no, I don't know what we were no, doing. We, whatever we, Tuesday. <laughs> I, I, I asked, they, they posted the, their questions in the comments. Okay, so Daniela from Northern Ireland. Okay, and I'm gonna say this is the last question because I know we can talk about this one for a while and my phone is the one they're gonna be calling on and my phone is also the one that we are with you guys on. Okay. So we're gonna do our best to answer this one. All right, I struggle with a sugar addiction. I've had it for a long time and I think it's the main reason of me being overweight how can I control it and not let it control me anymore? Oof. That's a good question. Addiction is real. 
And you can, ha you can be addicted to so many different variety of things. Um, you could be addicted to, addicted to a bad relationship. We talked about it last night. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can be addicted to food. You can be addicted to the drugs and alcohol. You can be addicted to pornography. You can be addicted to fitness. You can, like, I would say both Sari and I have very addictive personalities. Uh -huh. And when you really love something and you want to go for it, you're just like, I'm all in. Ah. And then, like, you can you be careful with the chair? Yeah, I am. You can, it can be a good thing. Like you can, you, it can be an asset or it can be a liability for you. And so the question is, how do I turn my addic addictive nature? Because no matter what, like, so sugar in itself has physically addicti addictive properties. Like physically, the chemicals that are released and the things that happen in your brain make it physically addicting. And you guys have probably heard like more addicting than cocaine. And what happens is like you just, you get this good happy feeling of, it, it's the dopamine and then you want more and then you want more and then you want more. But the problem is not sugar, the problem is processed sugar. Added processed sugar that for one, has like the chemical response, but then for two, also changes your palate. Because now, you know, like the, the sugar that's actually addicting is more highly processed. And what happens is it doesn't, it doesn't have the same sweetness as real food. So now your, your palate, your taste buds are looking for this other kind of sweetness and you need to keep going back to it to get it. So to overcome that, there needs to be a mindset shift and I think that there needs to be a perspective change on the way that you see food um, and probably some strategies around like how would I begin to overcome this. Uh -huh. So, an addiction to sugar involves two huge components that you have to tackle individ individualistically, but at the same time. So the behavioral dependence and the physiological dependence. Now, because sugar has a, because sugar is physiologically addicting in general, especially the type of sugar it is like the more the more highly processed the sugar is the more the addictive property of it will be okay however sugar is an addictive property in and of itself okay so from a physiological standpoint what can you do in order to handle that well for let's com let's compare it to alcohol Right, like if somebody has an addiction to alcohol, do you think that it would be the smarter thing for them to, you know, have a bottle of wine or just bottles of beer or whatever alcohol in their house? Probably not, because you are a byproduct of your environment, right? And if, and if you have easy and direct access to something, you are a lot more likely to consume it. Okay, now the reason why sugar addiction is really rough is because sugar is what's considered to be an acceptable drug. You don't have to be 21 to start eating sugar. Most kids are already addicted to sugar and they don't even know it, you know? So the, fir the first thing that I recommend that you do if you are really like, you know, addicted to sugar is don't bring it into your house and whatever you currently have in your house, just toss it out. Because all it takes is, we'll get to the behavioral component in just a little bit, all that it takes is just a small trigger for you to default back to sugar. 
however you like to either use it or abuse it, may I say. Some kind of emotion, even a visual stimulus of it, like you see it, now I want it. I wasn't even thinking about it, but now I want it. Um, there are so many different things that can trigger that. But, you know, the I see Heather Z, um, this is powerful for you as well. <laughs> but, you know, the, the tougher element of sugar addiction is that, you know, unlike alcohol where, you know, like in certain states, like unless you go to a liquor store, like you won't even see it at a regular store. Sugar is literally all around us. And, you know, the, the sad thing about it is that it's hidden. It's so hi much. It's hidden in most of the things that you're eating. And that is why it's really like, you know, we always teach to strive to eat nutrient dense foods, which are basically whole foods. Whole foods are foods that came straight from the ground, a tree, you know, um, the land, or, you know, let's say the sea. Okay. Because what you see is what you get with regards to that. Yes, we will have to factor in like soil fertilization and that sort of thing. But a sweet potato is a sweet potato. It, you know, it's not sweet potato enhanced with sugar. However, if we're talking about bread, even like whole grain sweet bread. Sweet potato like, chips. Right. Chances are is that if it comes in a bag, a box or a jar, there is a sugar in it. More likely than not. And here is why, you guys. The food industry from a from a marketing and consumer sales standpoint is brilliant, you guys. It is brilliant because it makes you dependent um, and a loyal consumer long term. Because they add, you know, there is these um, scientists. Can that I before you go into this, huh. like Daniela? And everybody who can resonate with this question and is like, yes, please answer this question. I need the answer to this question. All you need to do is watch one movie. Oh yeah. One movie. And it's called that sugar film, that sugar film. Uh -huh. You can find it on YouTube and it is a guy. Where's he from Australia? Yeah. And he literally, the reason he did this was because he was about to have a baby and all of the like foods, like he wanted to know about the, the quality of the foods for, cause he tries to live a healthy lifestyle. He, you know, is active and he, you know, they're mindful of what they eat him and his wife and all this. He goes to America and he, has to eat a certain number of grams of sugar every day. The average number of grams of sugar that the American, like the, the number of grams the average American eats in sugar a day, but it cannot be in obvious things. It cannot be in candy. It cannot be in soda. He's got to eat it in things like yogurt and sauces, Juice. juices, um, dressings, condiments. Yeah. Um, you know, applesauce, like he's got to eat it in things that are not obviously like candy. Mm -hmm. And what happens to his body in this amount of time is insane. And it's very, it's very educational. It's called that, that sugar film, that sugar film, that sugar film. Yeah. And you will start to understand. And even if the only thing that it does is open your mind to really what's going on, you will be just, I think that will kind of take you out of that semi by default. And um, now go into what you were gonna say because this is part of what they talk about in the film. Yeah, so there is scientists that all these big companies like Post Cereal, you know, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Kellogg's, whatever. Yeah, they, so th they hire these scientists who find what's called bliss points, which is, you know, they add just enough sugar to make something taste better, but not, not to a point where you can actually like feel that there is added sugar. Um, but basically because sugar is addictive, you will want to have more of it. For example, for all of you guys, cereal lover, they, cereal lovers, once you start eating cereal or even granola, like 
<laughs> Some of you guys, like Mel Williamson, like we needed to have like a two months conversation for you to finally get to a point where you're like, you know what, I'm gonna break up with granola. I'm like, I'm like, bitch, when would you stop eating that? So here's the thing, these scientists, their entire job, their only job is to find the specific number of grams of sugar in each serving of each food that sugar is added to, to make you addicted. That is their job. Mm -hmm. So that's what they get paid for is like, okay, how much sugar is not enough? How much is too much? Here's the sweet spot, the bliss point. It's to the gram, I don't know, it's probably a milli to the milligram yeah. of like how it will make you addicted. And they test it. They, te they have people test Campbell's soup and these or tomato soup or whatever. They have people test it. Like, no, that's too sweet. Uh, no, that's not sweet enough. So they can literally find where is that point where people will be addicted so they come to buy more. It's fucked up. Yeah, and what they do is they, the, from that they create, like their goal is you know, to, to manipulate as many factors as they can so they can make as many health claims as possible so that they can reach a, a larger market share and, you know, basically have as many lifelong consumers as possible. So imagine if somebody, you know, starts eating honey bunches of oats, let's say at the age of eight, and, you know, they live to be 80, mm -hmm. what, I don't know, what is the average box of cereal? I, I haven't bought it in like, Years. I could so smash I honey bunches of oats. Yeah, me too. Like a whole box. Yeah, a box is a serving size. So, so let's say if the average box is like is like four bucks, okay. And let's say even if you buy fifty boxes a year, okay, that's two hundred bucks per year. Times it by like seventy years, we're talking like fourteen thousand dollars. You guys, that's a lot. Of honey it's just like of it's oats. small drips that you don't even realize small drips from your pocket, small drips into your system. It's, it's a cycle and this is why, you know, like education is so important and this is why we do what we do because you don't know what you don't know and most people are living, breathing sugar addicts. And the sad thing is, is that if you are trying to lose weight, then chances are is that you're actually having good intentions, but because you don't know any better, your actions are messed up. Mm -hmm. So you end up consuming a shit ton of sugar from things that make health claims. Um, so, you know, that's the physiological part. What you'd want to do is you'd want to audit your environment. Okay. Out of sight, out of mind. Okay. And instead, because you will have those triggers, get, you know, cleaner stuff like fruit, that sort of thing. You guys, nobody ever gained weight from eating a pound of apples a day. Even if you were to eat a pound of apples a day, which I don't think you'd want to, nobody will ever gain weight from that because it's too nutrient dense. It's water content is way too high. Even watermelon. All right. Um, and then there's the behavioral element because sugar is comforting. What happens is that every time you're being triggered, you're either stressed out, you're either feeling emotional, you're either feeling lonely, you know, what you want to do? You want to open your cabinet and eat those dark chocolate co covered pretzels, mm. or you want to have a bowl of cereal with ice cream. Hey guys, also yogurt covered almonds are not healthy. <laughs> yeah. Just because it's yogurt and almonds. And white chocolate is not a thing because <laughs> real chocolate has cocoa and cocoa is definitely not white. <laughs> um, you know, so from a behavioral standpoint is you're going to have to shift your behavior. And now that is a process. Okay, so the good thing that you, you guys all have an advantage because you have this thing called a community. Mm. So you can start leaning in and start shifting your neurological patterns when you feel triggered. You know, you can either start journaling, you can lean into your accountability, you can lean into the community, you can, you know, like draw something, you can, 
you know, like write a poem. It's up to you, whatever method works best for you. We're all very different with how we operate and what works best for us. I remember for me when um, I used to struggle with a sugar addiction, for me, my, um, my anchor was taking a shower, brushing my teeth and There's one more thing that I would suggest that you do is make a ceremony. This is a mental thing. Make a ceremony. When you get rid of the shit that's in your house, get rid of it in a way that makes you feel empowered like you no longer have control over me. Yes. I had one of our clients one time go to Trader Joe's, get the chocolate bars that she always gets, and then walk out of the store and literally break them up and throw them straight into the garbage can. You don't own me. You don't own me. I'm the boss. Mm -hmm. Right? And like put your foot down. So. All right, you guys. Like well, the truck is here, so we have to get all of our house things settled. We hope that you found lots of value from today's conversation. Hey, whether it is anything to do with sugar addiction, if you found value from today's conversation and there is a person in your life who will find value as well, then we'd appreciate it if you would, you know, help sharing the love, spreading the word about this mission and and all of the information that everybody needs to know in order to gain control over their body and their lives. Just a reminder that tomorrow and Thursday, there will be no espresso due to travels. So we will catch you guys back on Friday morning for a live guest interview at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific. We hope that you guys have a beautiful day and we love you. We're so grateful for you hopping in, doing great things for yourself and also sharing the love. As you guys can see, the truck is there. So we're going to go get it. We hope that you guys have a beautiful day. Take care. Bye guys.